Today in John Wesley's Journal is a podcast produced by the Wesley Center at Chattanooga, the United Methodist Student Center. In this podcast, we will learn about early Methodism by following John Wesley through his journal as he and others begin a movement that would give rise to the Methodist Church in all its forms. So sit back and let's see what happened today in John Wesley's journal. Welcome back to today in John Wesley's journal for December 21st, 1735. But before we get into John Wesley's journal, let's look at some other things that happened on this day in Christian history. John Newton died on this day in 1807. Newton had captained many slave ships during his career until his conviction of sin led him to faith in Christ. He would go on to serve the church, inspiring others to fight against the slave trade. John Newton is best known for this hymn. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did the grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me, his word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be, as long as life endures. Yea, when this flesh and heart shall fail, and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first begun. Also on this day in 1856, John Harris of London died. He was a preacher, educator, and author, and his most famous book was called The Great Teacher, Characteristics of Our Lord's Ministry. He also had another book called Mammon, or Covetousness, The Sin of the Christian Church, and that book didn't seem to go over so well with the rest of the church. Also on this day in 1870, the newly formed CME that we talked about the other day on the 18th elected its first two bishops, William H. Miles and Richard H. Vanderhoort. And on this day in 1941, the BBC debuted The Man Born to be King, a play by Dorothy Sayers. And earlier this week, on December 20th, 1560, the first General Assembly of the Church of Scotland gathered. Charles Dickens' book, A Christmas Carol, is finally published on December 19, 1843. The full title of the book is A Christmas Carol in Prose, Being a Ghost Story of Christmas. Dickens' little book rapidly gained acclaim, garnering praise like this from a reviewer named Charles McKay. Mr. Dickens here has produced a most appropriate Christmas offering, and one which, if properly made use of, may yet, we hope, lead to some more valuable result than mere amusement. It is impossible to read this little volume through, however hastily, without perceiving that its composition was prompted by a spirit of wide and wholesome philanthropy, a spirit to which selfishness in enjoyment is an inconceivable idea, a spirit that knows where happiness can exist and ought to exist, and will not be happy itself till it has done something toward promoting its growth here. If such spirits could be multiplied as the copies of this little book, we doubt not will be. What a happy Christmas indeed we should yet have this 1843. And that quote is from a book by Les Standifert called The Man Who Invented Christmas. And if you'd like to know more about the history of this book, A Christmas Carol, I suggest you go look that title up. It's hard for me to pick a favorite quote from A Christmas Carol, but most of my favorites come from The Ghost of Christmas Present. He likes to taunt and chastise Scrooge with his own callous thoughts and words. At one point, Scrooge lays an accusation at the feet of the ghost for policies that he says are done in his name that actually make life harder for the poor, to which The Ghost of Christmas Present retorts, There are some upon this earth of yours, returns the spirit, lay claim to know us and 
who do their deeds of passion, pride, ill will, hatred, envy, bigotry, and selfishness in our name, who are as strange to us and all our kith and kin as if they had never lived. Remember that and charge their doings on themselves, not us. And then as the ghost of Christmas present leaves Scrooge to his selfish fate, he leaves him with this warning. Forgive me if I am not justified in what I ask, said Scrooge, looking intently at the spirit's robe. But I see something strange and not belonging to yourself protruding from your skirts. Is it a foot or a claw? It might be a claw for the flesh that there, there is upon it, was the spirit's sorrowful reply. Look here. From the foldings of its robe, it brought two children, wretched, abject, frightful, hideous, miserable. They knelt down at his feet and clung upon the outside of its garment. Oh man, look here. Look, look down here, exclaimed the ghost. They were a boy and a girl, yellow, meager, ragged, scowling, wolfish, but prostrate too in their humility. Spirit, are they yours? Scrooge could say no more. They are man's, said the spirit, looking down upon them, and they cling to me, appealing from their father. This boy is ignorance, this girl is want. Beware of them both, and all of their degree, but most of all beware this boy, for on his brow I see that written which is doomed. Unless the writing be erased, deny it, cried the spirit, stretching out his hand toward the city. Slander those who tell it ye, admit it for your factious purposes, and make it worse, and bide the end. Are they no refuge or resource, cried Scrooge? Are there no prisons, said the spirit, turning on him for the last time with his own words? Are there no workhouses? And the bell struck twelve. Another Charles that uh, we neglected to remember on December 18th uh, is Charles Wesley, whose birthday is December 18th, 1707, and it is only fitting that we read one of his best-known hymns, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity, pleased with us in flesh to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that we no more may die, born to raise us from the earth to give us a second birth. Hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. And now today in John Wesley's journal for today, December 21st, or rather 1735. We had 15 communicants, which was our usual number on Sundays. On Christmas Day, we had 19, but on New Year's Day, and now we return to our time, but we'll be back in the new year on January 15th for another entry in John Wesley's journal. Have a good day.